Hello science lovers. Today we're looking at the National Geographic Amazing Reactions Chemistry Set, which is part of the Mega Science Series. It's billed as having 45 easy science experiments. I'll include a list of all the experiments in the description below the video. Full marks to the organization inside this kit. There's two experiment guides. A little uh, tray that you can assemble to do experiments in. And then they've got all the equipment nicely organized inside. We have an experiment tray easy to assemble. What I particularly love about this kit is we have safety goggles. And because it's a chemistry set, we have gloves too. Very nicely done. Full marks for that. Green sodium alginate solution. Small beaker. A larger plastic cup, a small plastic cup, and two very solid test tubes with the screw on lids and a nice stand to hold them upright. Very solid quality. I'm pleased about that. pH indicating solution. Straw, plastic spray bottle, pipe cleaner for cleaning the test tubes with. They appear to have thought of everything. Double sided measuring spoon, pipette. A mold. This is very interesting. We'll run this experiment later. It's for making a bouncing ball. Cotton wool buds. I think this is pH indicating paper. Tube labeled science magic. Not entirely sure what that is. Guess we'll find out. Another tiny little measuring spoon. Two pieces for making a little tree. And what I imagine is the stand that the tree goes into. Crystal growing liquid. A set of markers of different colors. And finally, we have a whole bunch of chemicals. Citric acid. Red cabbage powder. Calcium chloride. Water jelly crystals. Baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Fizzy coloring tablets. Sodium carbonate. Bouncy ball polymer powder. And zinc sulfide. There's a full color experiment guide. It looks like the instructions are very clear. 
and after every experiment there's a small scientific explanation. And you know me, it's fun doing these experiments, but the education of the science is very important. As I said, there's a list of the experiments in the description below the video. And this booklet has more than 37 pages, very well produced. On top of that, you get a bonus book, 30 bonus experiments to do at home. Very similar layout, full color, instructions, the science behind the experiment, and it looks like there's some fun experiments in here. Many of these require equipment that's not provided in the kit. Well, look at that. Make ice cream in a bag. All in all, so far I'm very impressed with the quality of the components in this kit and the instruction manuals. Full marks so far. Let's do some science. Here we are in the kitchen, my impromptu laboratory, and we're setting up the atomic fizz experiment in the experiment tray. The first thing we're going to do is take 20 milliliters of water and put it into the first test tube. To which we're going to add five drops of phenol red. We need to be careful with this chemical. It does stain. Let's see, five drops. And then we're going to stir. Then into the second test tube, we're going to put 50 milliliters of water. into which we're going to stir two medium scoops of baking soda. And we're going to stir until it's dissolved in solution. I think that's pretty much in solution. And now we're going to put both our solutions into the tall cup, which should turn the solution a pink color, indicating a high pH. And remember, safety goggles at all times. And there's a very pretty pink color. Back in the beaker, we have 20 milliliters of water again, into which we're going to dissolve a big scoop of citric acid. I think that's as dissolved as we're going to get it. The citric acid in the beaker is obviously our acidic solution. And now when we mix them together, we should get a reaction that forms carbon dioxide gas, which is going to fizz and turn the pink color into an atomic yellow. Let's see if that's true. And it is. Huge release of carbon dioxide gas there. And an atomic yellow solution. Good experiment. Now we're going to run an experiment called Turbid Charged. Make sure that all your equipment has been thoroughly cleaned. You don't want chemicals from previous experiments interfering with the reactions. This one demonstrates the difference between uh, chemicals in solution and chemicals that are turbid. In other words, the solid particles are suspended in the solution. 
So first we're going to take 30 milliliters of water and we're going to add it to the tool cup. Into which we're going to add one medium scoop of sodium carbonate. And we're going to stir that into solution. Now we're going to take another 30 milliliters of water, put it into the first test tube, into which we're going to dissolve two medium scoops of calcium chloride. I think that's a good solution. Now, when we mix these two solutions together, we should get a milky white solution, which is basically turbid. In other words, the particles are suspended in the solution rather than dissolved. And that's exactly what we get. Now we take 50 milliliters of water into the second test tube. Into which we're going to dissolve a large scoop of citric acid. Definitely harder to make these larger crystals fall into solution. But I think that is now a solution. So if you remember, in our tall cup, we have a mixture of sodium carbonate and calcium chloride, which basically makes calcium carbonate. This is a similar compound that you find in eggshells and in pearls, which is why it's a milky color. And now when we add the acidic solution to it, it should take all those particles out of suspension and turn the solution clear again. And that's exactly what it did. Bearing in mind that the first mixture was a little milky to start with, another good experiment. Now we're going to make polymer worms. First thing we do is take half a tall cup of water and add one medium scoop of calcium chloride and dissolve it. Now we're going to use the green sodium alginate solution and squirt in some worms. It was not really how it was described in the instruction booklet. It said a steady stream of sodium alginate, which really came out as a liquid. Um, so instead of worms, I more really have kind of little jellyfish growth. Interesting. But not exactly as the book described it. Let's try again. It comes out more droplets than a stream. I think that's the problem. We sort of have some worms in there. I'd be interested to see if you can make this experiment work. Leave a comment below the video if you get this to work and let me know what it is I'm doing wrong.
So this is our fourth and final experiment. I fill the glass with two thirds full with water. We have our three colors of polymer powders and I'm going to assemble the bouncing ball mold which just clips together. Like so. Then we pour each of the polymer bags into the mold, any arrangement of colors we want. And we simply put the entire pouch in the mold. Settle it down and then move on to the next color. And when we have it all in the mold, we simply submerge it in the water, which I guess is going to react with the polymer crystals. Holding it until all the bubbles escape, and we leave it there for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you take it out of the water and you just set it on the paper towel and leave it to harden for a further 15 minutes. I've left this sitting here now for about 45 minutes because I'm concerned that the surface is tacky. It's supposed to be solid. I'm worried that when I crack open this mold, it's going to be tacky, which is not really going to be any good for a bouncing ball. But let's see what happens. I don't know. That looks promising. Oh yeah, that's solid. It's just this top piece that I guess was reacting with the air. That's pretty cool, huh? Congratulations if you made it this far. This was a really long video. But I like this kit a lot. The components are very solid and they've got a lot of fun educational experiments. Definitely recommend it. I bought this from Amazon for $35 and there's a link in the description below if you want to try it out. And remember, please subscribe. This is your definitive channel for reviews of STEM kits, so you don't want to miss the next video. Meantime, happy holidays, and I'll see you then. Cheerio.